that could be aggravated by this adventure. Expected mothers should not go. Go, Alan, go. go. Once on board your safari transport. Alright, friends with the right, watch your hands, arms, feet, and legs. Those doors are sliding closed. Everybody's ready for this? Yeah. This is a sick car. I wish I had this car. Thanks, Gordon. Yeah, look at it. As we say here in Harambe, twin day, which means let's go. Ciao, friends. My name is Tessa, and I'll be your safari guide today for the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Now, if you guys look right above your head up there, there is an animal spotting guide, which will help you to identify some of the animals we might see out here on the reserve today. Along the reserve area, I ask that you please remain seated at all times, keeping all hands, arms, feet, and legs also inside the vehicle. And please be sure to keep those face coverings on for the whole safari as well. Now, I definitely encourage you all to take pictures and videos while we're out here on the reserve. Just make sure those phones and cameras are out and ready to go. I would suggest putting them on a live action sports setting. Whatever helps you get the best quality as we're moving along the reserve here. And make sure you hold on very tight look, tightly to those devices too. Because this is going to be a very bumpy ride. Alrighty, without further ado, it looks like we have our clearance to begin. So we're getting started here in the little Aturi forest first. Now right off the bat here, there are some animals to the left. These copper colored antelope are bongos. Now, bongos are known as the ghosts of the forest because they're very rarely seen, so consider this seeing some ghosts. Now, both male and female bongos carry those horns that slant backwards towards their head, which helps them to run really quickly through the forest without getting caught on anything. Also to the right, that animal with this dark brown coat with the striped legs, it's called an okapi. Now, the okapi stripes almost look like zebra stripes. However, they are the most known relative of the giraffe. They do share similar skeletal structures of the giraffe, and they both have a long prehensile tongue, which helps them to reach high up above them into the trees to grasp all of the leaves that they eat. Alrighty, I'd say we're off to a good start in here so far. Let's see what other animals we can find around here. Ooh, now watering holes are a really great place for animals to gather. And it looks like it's going to lead us to a black rhino to the left who's hanging out by the mud ball back there in the middle. Now, black rhinos can weigh up to 3,000 pounds. They're pretty massive animals. Uh, they have these pointed upper prehensile lips which help them to browse in the forest. So that means they can grab leaves off of bushes, branches, trees, anything that's a little bit taller than them and bring them down to their level. So each different type of rhino has a different mouth shape for the different ecosystems that they live in. Hopefully we'll get to touch more on that as we continue the safari here. So we'll hang on to all those rhino facts. But in the meantime, see some other animals off to the left here. The saddle-billed stork. There's really large white and black birds in the middle. So they get their names from this yellow saddle shape that sits towards the top of their beak. Male uh, saddle build sorks will have dark brown eyes and females will have bright yellow eyes. And when they're standing up as tall as they can, they can stand up to five feet tall. Alrighty, now we're going to continue our journey down into the Safi River. Animals at the Safi River can be found submerged inside the water or just next to the river, keeping their skin cool on those typically hotter days. So we're going to be looking out for more of those aquatic animals around here. Now if you look off to the left here in the water, you'll find a group of hippos at the very surface of the water. Now the Nile hippopotamus can weigh up to 5,500 pounds. They're pretty massive. Typically during the day, hippos will be seen just like these ones are with their bodies in the water, keeping cool. They're also usually asleep during the day because they are nocturnal animals. That means they're most active at night, which they'll usually be seen out on land looking for food at night. Now the really large white birds on both of these islands are the pink back pelicans. They get their names from turning a pinker color on their backs during mating season. Now believe it or not, their wingspan is about the size of the canopy of this truck right above our heads. And they do prefer to feed in the quiet backwaters like the Safi River, so this is a great place for them to call home. Other animals that call the Safi River home are the Nile Crocodile. 
These are the largest crocodiles in Africa. Their diet is mainly made of fish. However, they're also known to eat those bigger animals like antelope, especially when they decide to migrate through the water. Now, they don't eat in regular intervals like we as humans do. They can actually go a few months without eating anything at all. But to do that, they have to eat a lot of food all at once beforehand. With that being said, they can eat about half of their body weight in one meal, which equals to about 250 pounds. going to be entering the largest ecosystem here on the Harambe Wildlife Preserve. It's known as the savanna. Now, I always consider the savanna a fan favorite because it's home to those famous animals like elephants, zebras, giraffes, ostrich, as well as those larger cats like cheetahs and lions. All of those great beautiful animals that we all know and love and so many more like to call the savanna home. Say, Let's go, lion, because lions are yeah. Looks like a few of the animals that we already mentioned are right in the middle of the savanna. Some giraffe and zebras. Also lots more. There's wildebeest there too. Now the good thing about giraffes is that they're usually in a group together and you'll find a few more up ahead here that we'll probably get a little bit closer up to. And some babies if we're lucky. There are some baby giraffes in this tower, which is their group name probably guess why that is. <laughs> Giraffes are the tallest land animals in the world. They will definitely tower over all of us. Yeah. Now off to the left, you'll find a pack of African wild dogs laying down in the middle there with those yellow, black, and white colors on their fur. African wild dogs are better known as painted dogs for the painted look on their fur. The very best hunters with about an 80 percent success rate basically they'll chase their prey until their prey falls over from exhaustion now let's go get a little bit closer up to these animals over here on the left side the official emblem of the harambe wildlife reserve is laying back there with the sharp horns those are the sable antelope very resilient animals in a fight or flight situation. They will fight every single time. Now here come the giraffes, and there's a baby giraffe in these three right here. These are all Maasai giraffes. Maasai giraffes have these rough, kind of irregular pattern on their coats. As opposed to the reticulated giraffe, they are more of a rounder and sort of a smoother coat pattern. Now it looks like the majority of the giraffes out here right now are eating. It's usually what giraffes do all day long. They only need about 30 minutes of sleep per day, which then leaves the whole rest of the day left for them to eat. Sounds like a pretty good life. Now, to help them with all that eating, they have these really long prehensile tongues. That means they have a lot of control over it, so they can grab those leaves with it and bring it down to their level. Also, they have purple colors to the tongue, so it helps them from getting sunburned. So you'll see the purple tongues on these ones here. There's another baby giraffe crossing the road right now in front of us as well. Oh, now, as giraffes are walking, they look like they walk pretty slowly, almost in slow motion, or at least it feels like it. Uh, but they can be pretty fast whenever they want to be. Their long legs can carry them up to 40 miles per hour. Not always the most graceful of runs, but it will definitely get the job done. A little bit closer up to the wildebeest and the zebras here. Oftentimes on a savanna, these two animals will stay really close by to each other because they tend to blend in very well together. They definitely work together to help each other, to protect each other from any prey. Now, those zebras there are mountain zebras. Mountain zebras are the most social of the three zebra species. They're usually always found in a group together, so that's why they're all really close by to each other there. And a group name for the zebra is a dazzle. That last 
lots more wildebeest up here to see as well. Now they are very densely populated, so they like to stick together nearby each other. There are about 1.5 million wildebeest that will all migrate over a thousand miles in a single year. There's a few more that will be on the sides of the hill at the very top there too. Another name for a wildebeest is a new, spelled G-N-U, if you've ever heard, heard that word before, uh, with a silent G. They get it from the low grunting sound that they make. It sounds like the word new. So they could either be called wildebeest or new. I'd say we're off to a pretty good start in the savannah so far. they are really up close sights. We're now going to be heading on into a different part of the savannah, which is known as elephant country. So we're going to be looking out for the largest land mammals in the world. herd is made up of mostly adult females and their children. It's called the matriarchal group and there's usually up to about 30 elephants in that group total. Now when the male elephants are mature enough around the age of 16 they tend to leave those family groups to then be found either by themselves or in small bachelor groups. Animals Looks won't, like there are animals won't walk right on there. it. They'll probably get a little bit closer up to. Look out, elephants. But they can weigh up to 13,000 pounds which really does make them the largest land mammals. Pretty incredible. Now, if you have ever wondered why elephants are usually very dirty on their skin, especially on the top of their back, that's usually on purpose, and it's a very, very good thing. Elephants have very sensitive skins. They tend to pick up mud and dirt and sand up with their trunks to then throw it directly on their bodies to cool themselves down. Also, that layer of mud and dirt will act as a natural sunscreen too, so it helps to protect their skin. They also have another way of cooling their bodies down and it is by flapping their ears. They have a lot of blood vessels that are right behind those ears so that constant airflow on them really do work to their advantage and make all the difference for sure. Alrighty, now we're gonna continue this way since that road was closed to hopefully find some more elephants up ahead. If we do, we'll try to figure out which group they are in, either that matriarchal group or that bachelor group. clay and I know that elephants love to eat off of red clay it's like a source of minerals for them so usually they'll find their way through here to eat off of the clay might find some tusk marks in the walls so they probably made yeah, their way through here marks. oh it looks like there's some in the distance off to the left now, the matriarchal groups of elephants are a little more social uh, than the bachelor ones only because they have the kids, they have the youngest elephants. So typically during the daytime, younger elephants will be seen socializing with their cousins and their aunts. At nighttime though, they'll always be back with their mothers, so it kind of resembles a human curfew if you think about it. So we're pretty similar in a lot of ways to the elephant structure see them all the way in the back there to the left. Looks like they found some shade back there. They're on the move. See more wildebeest off to the right here. Well, some springbok, those tiny tan animals. Springbok are in the top 10 fastest land mammals in the world. They can reach speeds up to 55 miles per hour. Now on the left side here, these are greater flamingos. Greater flamingos are the lightest shade of pink in the flamingo species, as well as the largest. They are born a gray color naturally, but they will grow their pinker color over time from the brine shrimp that's in their diet. The shrimp has keratin, which causes that coloration. And they usually don't start to grow that full pink color until they are around the age of two.
And we see a really large mud wallow off on the left side here, which is a pretty good sign that there could be some more rhinos around here somewhere. I say that because rhinos also have very sensitive skin. But since they don't have a trunk like elephants to throw that mud on their backs, they instead have to roll all around in these mud wallows to cool off and get their natural sunscreen. So oftentimes they will stay very close by to the mud wallows. We'll keep that in mind, but also we're getting closer to where some of those bigger cats like to hang out too. So we'll be looking out for both around here. corner here is this really big rock formation that kind of resembles from the movie The Lion King with Pride Rock. It's very, very similar. Lions like to claim really tall rocks in the savanna because they like to be the first to know what's going on all around them. We'll look to the left, here's an ostrich that made their way out. This is a female ostrich. Uh, females have light gray colors. Males have black feathers. She's probably gonna get really close, so we're gonna keep going. She might follow us though, so if you're in the back of the truck, you can watch her as she follows. <laughs> they like to take us by surprise. So we're probably gonna find some more around here somewhere. So what do you know? She's following behind us here. <laughs> now look in the front of the rocks. You'll see some lions sleeping. So they're doing what lions will typically do all day long for about 20 hours. They are sleeping because they are most active at night. That's when they do most of their hunting. They're trying to save their energy for when they are going to be hunting. And when it's time to hunt, it will be those females that will be the hunters. They'll work together in teams to hunt down the prey. While the males, like the one with the luscious mane at the bottom there, they are their protectors. They'll stay back to protect the cubs and their territory. Now the older the males get, the longer and the fuller those manes will become, and the darker the color will become too. Now if they were actually awake right now, and they were to start roaring, a lot of the guests here in the park that weren't even on the safari could probably hear them because their roars are so powerful, they can be heard up to five miles away. It's pretty incredible, very, very powerful. are relatives of the wildebeest that we saw a little bit ago. Also some ostrich eggs off here to the right too. Very large, they can weigh up to three pounds each. Now an ostrich chick will hatch at about the same size as an adult chicken. That's how large they are. It's pretty crazy. Now ostriches cannot fly, but to make up for that lack of flight, they can run really, really fast, up to 40 miles per hour. They'll actually use their wings to steer themselves as they run. There's still a little bit of use to those wings. Now we have one final stop on the reserve and that is going to be the Warden's Post. Now that's gonna symbolize that we're getting a little bit closer back to civilization because recently uh, the Warden has acquired the most adorable Nigerian dwarf goats as well. So we haven't run out of chance just yet to see them animals. I see them running up the hill right now. Let's go see what they're up to. <laughs> and they ran up the other side of the hill. Let's see if we can catch them over there. Oh, yeah. Now don't let their size fool you when we do see them. Uh, they are full grown adults. Very rambunctious, very social. They like to be in these groups together. And we can learn a lot from the relationship between the warden and the goats. The warden takes really awesome care of the goats and keeps them safe here at the post 
while equally getting milk and cheese from the goats, which is considered of high value in Africa, which will then help the community to rely less on the wildlife nearby, which is really awesome. So we can definitely learn a lot from them for that very reason. Alrighty friends, so looks like those gates have opened for us to head back towards the village now. So I hope you guys are able to see some of your favorite animals out there today and some really cool and up close sights of them. Now, no two safaris are ever the same. The animals definitely make sure of that too, so I encourage you all to come back and ride again sometime. You might even get the chance to see a different animal than you saw this time around. Now, if you'd like to find some more animals while you are still here in Africa, the best way to do so is by going over to Gorilla Falls. And that's right to the top of the hill once you exit off the safari. Over at Gorilla Falls, you can find a family of Western Lowland gorillas. There's a baby gorilla in that family group. She's very small, very, very cute. There's also an underwater hippo pool, naked mole rats, meerkats, birds, and fish, and it's all at your own pace. So you can sit there and admire the animals for as long as you wish. Now for those of you that are wilderness explorers, you've been riding aboard the Simba One. Simba like the lion from The Lion King and the number one. This should be on page 15 of your booklet. You can pick your badge up across from the entrance to the safari. Alrighty friends, now here in Harambe, we don't like to say goodbye. Instead, we say a word called Kwaharini. Kwaharini means to go well. So go well, my friends, go wild, and I hope you have a great rest of your day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom or wherever your adventures may take you today.